fallait tout le temps faire. We were always being asked to get more, more, more. I've never been able to say no. Je suis dire non. Our balance between work and personal life is really not good. We don't have middle or executive management. Hello and welcome to a new edition of France in Focus. I'm Nadia Charby and this week you join us in a co-working space just outside Paris as we examine the French workplace. While here it's all about balancing professional performance and personal well-being, the average French office isn't a happy place. In 2016, some 10,000 cases of psychiatric breakdown were recognized as professional ailments. That's 50 times more than just four years earlier, and at a cost of 230 million euros for the National Health Service. In response, a number of French hospitals now specialize in treating these modern disorders. Take a look. Every month, every week, we would go over the sales figures. We were always being asked to get more, more, more. I've never been able to say no, and little by little, I exhausted myself. As a sales rep, Claude worked 10-hour days selling medical equipment for a major company for 18 years, until a new management team arrived. As the most senior person in the team, I tried to help my junior colleagues and to provide maximum information to develop sales. And with time, the figures began to fall. So I tried to compensate for that by traveling more and working more, and I ended up cracking. Last September, Claude was signed off work. Since then, he's been going twice a week to this specialized clinic for employment-related illnesses whilst waiting to get back to work. It doesn't seem possible for him to return to his current employer. There's a toxic psychological association for him there, so he needs to move on. Nicole has been signed off for two years. After a period of depression, she had to give up her profession, training groups of teachers for a community charity. These days we ask for things to be done immediately. We have to tick the boxes, cut corners, but it just doesn't work like that. When you're working with people, situations don't fit neatly into boxes. Since opening just over a year ago, the clinic has received some 443 patients. More than half of them are executives, all suffering from the same symptoms. Les dépressions réactionnelles. Reactive depression or post-traumatic neuroses, these are conditions which are reactive to a difficult event or an ongoing decline in working conditions. Often in conflict with their employer, few executives agree to talk. In management, our way of expressing ourselves is to hammer things out. We're almost robots, but here we can let go. On average, it takes around 15 months for patients at the clinic to get back on their feet and rediscover an appetite for work. Now, beyond addressing the medical consequences of a high-pressure work environment, a growing number of French companies have started to adjust their management style. Less hierarchy, more autonomy and flexibility. It's a novel approach that's slowly gaining traction. 9.30 a.m. That's the time Demba Bar has chosen to start his day's work. And it's not the only thing he gets a say on. Yes, donc, uh, The seat with the exercise bike is free, so I'm going to make the most of it. bar has been an app developer at Time for three years, a startup which is striving towards near total freedom for its employees. You can choose where you work, And when you work, you might be under the weather or have something else to do. And you can also choose your salary, as long as your colleagues agree to it. It sounds too good to be true compared to the usual rat race. The co-founders want to break tradition and challenge the way businesses are usually run. 
We don't really have a hierarchy. We don't have terms you find in typical startups, like CEO or COO. We don't give someone a label, which means they have all the power. Sometimes people without such labels have great ideas. What did he do in this company to transform? The concept of the liberated company, where employees have complete freedom while sharing responsibility, was developed by business school professor Isaac Goetz. His book Freedom Inc. was a bestseller in France. If you uh, are able to build a company with 11 uh, hierarchical levels and still provide um, the freedom of initiative and, and responsibility to your employees, uh, great, good luck. But what you see typically <clears throat> is that when you want to pe trust people more with their intelligence, their ability to find solutions, you need to control less, not more. It's not only young startups that are aspiring to be liberated companies. Multinationals like Michelin, Decathlon and EDF are now trying to emulate the idea as well. Well, for some analysis on these issues, I'm joined now by Gaël chatelain berry who specialises in human-centric management and advises companies seeking to change their ways. Gaël chatelain berry hello. Hello. Thank you very much for being with us. Welcome. Uh, first, how would you define uh, human-centric management? It's kind of super simple. I mean, um, human-centred management is just about taking care of people and never do to your team what you would not like your own manager is doing to you. So it's really, really simple. Where does France stand on that front? Unfortunately, France is probably one of the worst uh, in the world. I'm talking about developed countries. We're really far, far, far compared to Germany, to UK, including UK, even US. I mean, human-centered management is really something that is kind of cultural, for instance, for Swedish people, which is not the case for France. And is there also a sense that, until quite recently, the French didn't view management as a separate skill set that you need to learn and apply, uh, but instead as just a, a step up the professional ladder, a power move? Yeah, the, the problem is that in France, you become a manager if you, you've been working in a company for 20 years and, OK, as a reward, you, you will be manager, which is kind of stupid, or you're the best uh, salesman, so you're going to be... Uh, the self director, which is nonsense, and we don't care about soft skills, meaning being able to listen to people, being able just to be calm and not yell all the time, just understand that you cannot, as a manager, send an email during the weekend or during the holidays. So it's really not technical, it's just taking care of the people. So the notion of a, a superior French work-life balance is actually a myth, do you think? Yes. In France, if you leave your work at 5 p.m., Everybody will say, oh, huh, you're taking your afternoon, you're not working today? So in France, we really have some kind of cultural thing making the people think that if you stay late, you're a good manager or you're a good worker. So our work balance between, our balance between work and personal life is really not good. But we're improving. Now, as we saw in our report there, a number of leading French companies are starting to shift to this new workplace model. Is that because they're also having to adapt to a new generation of employees? It's worse than that. They have to adapt if they want to be able to hire people because a lot of, young, of the young generation just do not want to work for that kind of companies. And when you are a big company and you realise that People having a diploma from a business school or an engineer school or whatever just do not want to come to work for them. They just have to adapt. So I think there, there's kind of a panic in companies just to change their mindset, to change the way of working, just to say to all these young guys, come on, it's kind of cool here. But does this uh, new, freer work model actually work for everyone? Are the older generations benefiting from this reboot of their workspace and their work practices? Actually, it totally depends. I saw a company who decided to adapt everything to young people, and that's a mistake. It has to be, well-being at work has to be for young, for all, for everybody. So that's why it's so hard to implement such 
strategy because you really have to think about everybody. And for sure, uh, someone being, I don't know, 59 doesn't necessarily want to have sneakers or uh, candies. Friday work, wear every day. Friday wear, yeah. But that's important for young people. So you, you really have to check who's working for me and how can I implement new things to make people feel better. Going back to, to this idea of everyone being a leader, an intrapreneur, doesn't that add new pressure on employees? Actually, I hate that word, leaders, because I really think that you can not be a leader, not be a manager and be super happy at work. And I think there's really a total shift from my generation to the new generation. A lot of young people just don't care about being a manager one day. It's not the goal. They are happy. They want just to have fun in their work. They have to got a good balance between their work and their personal life. But frankly, my generation, the target was being a manager one day, which is not the case for the young generation. And what would be your, your advice, your priority for French companies going forward? I really think the best advice I could give to any manager or any employee is being able to say whatever to your manager or your team. I think that freedom of speech is really the key of everything. Being able to say to your manager, I'm unhappy with that. Or a manager being able to say, hey, I like that. You know that coming back to basics, really basic, just saying hi is one of the biggest problems in French companies. A lot of people are complaining because their manager are not saying hi every morning. So that's not that hard to implement that. Gaël Jaltambéry, thank you very much. You're welcome. And thank you for watching. That's how we're leaving this edition. Stay tuned to France 24.